Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a differential equation. Don't be scared when I say differential. Don't let that scare you because this is a really simple, basic equation. So we have y equals f of x, f of zero equals one. And we have the equation y prime equals x plus xy. Y prime stands for the derivative of y with respect to x in this case. Okay, so if you don't count the polynomial differential equation we I've done on June 11th, this could be considered the first differential equation. So let's go ahead and take a look. We are given an initial condition here, f of zero equals one, that is gonna allow us to find or to fine tune the answer at the end. So first of all, I'm going to write y prime as dy over dx, which indicates that I'm differentiating y with respect to x. And since y is a function of x, this makes sense, right? And on the right hand side, I'm just gonna write it as x plus xy for now, and later on, I'm going to work it out. And then my next step is going to involve putting the dy and dx on either sides. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by dx. And let's write the expression first and then times dx. You know, when we were integrating, this was something that we've seen very often, like you call something u and then differentiate both sides and you get du. So this is dy in terms of dx, but x and y are together. So that's why the solution is not that straightforward at this point. So here's the next thing I'm gonna do. I'm going to factor this. Notice that x plus xy is factorable. So we can write it as x times one plus y or y plus one dx. Great. Now at this point, I wanna tell you something. These are called separable differential equations because you can separate the x and y and their solutions are fairly simple. If you know how to integrate basic functions, if you know the rules, then you can easily solve these types of equations. So now I do see a dy on the left hand side and one plus y on the right hand side. I wanna bring those together. So I'm gonna move this one plus y over to the left and I'm going to keep the x dx here on the right hand side. Let's go ahead and do it. And let's write it as y plus one instead of one plus y. That looks a little better. So it's like more standard form. So dy over y plus one becomes x dx. So far we haven't really done any calculus or differentiation or any integration. The only thing we've done was algebra. You know, we cross multiplied, separated the variables, factored and so on and so forth. Nothing calculus so far. Now at this point, I was able to separate the variables and I'm going to integrate both sides. This is why uh, these equations are called separable because you can separate the variables. Now, if you integrate both sides, you're going to get nice results because one over y plus one is easy to integrate, x is very easy to integrate, so we can integrate both sides. Of course, on the left, it's a y, on the right, it's an x. So the integral of one over y is ln, so this is very similar to it, except we were adding a constant, so it's just gonna be the same thing. We can write this as ln of the absolute value of y plus one. Great. And then the right hand side is going to equal x squared over two. And to integrate x, I'm basically using uh, the power rule. So if you have x to the power n dx, of course, where x uh, n does not equal negative one, we have x to the power n plus one divided by n plus one plus c. We just increase the exponent and divide by that. And it's the opposite of differentiation because in differentiation we lower the exponent. So now we have this, but we have to use a constant. Let's go ahead and put the C. You know that writing the C there is a big deal. If you don't on the test, you may lose points. So now we have this ln something, but I would like to get a more explicit um, form for the y. So I wanna get y by itself if possible. And in this case it is. So let's go ahead and raise uh, e to the power both sides. And now we're gonna get e to the power ln absolute value of y plus one. I have to use the absolute value because I don't know if y plus one is positive or negative, but ln function in the real world is only defined for positive arguments. So this is going to look like the following. Then I'm gonna raise everything on the right hand side. And then now we get the following. What is e to the power ln something? You know, uh, e to the power ln x is equal to x. So whatever the argument is, it's gonna be that. So from here we get the absolute value of y plus one. We got rid of the ln here, and then we can just set it equal to this function. But notice that the exponents are added, so I can just go ahead and separate the exponents and write it like this, right? When we multiply two powers with the same base, 
we add the exponents, here we can just reverse the process. Okay, now, at this point, we want to use our initial condition. Why? Because that's given for a purpose, right? They, we were told that f of 0 equals 1, so now we're going to use it. Let's go ahead and take note here that f of 0 is equal to 1 and explain what that means. So it means that when x is equal to, since y is a function of x, so we can write this function as y equals f of x. So f of 0 means x equals 0. Uh, in this case, y equals 1. So in other words, if this is a function, and of course it can be graphed, uh, then we're going to, this means that 0, 1 is a point on this graph. Now, we're going to go ahead and substitute it. And when we do replace y with 1, it's going to give us the absolute value of 2 and then e to the power 0 times e to the power c. Great. Now, absolute value of 2 is absolutely 2 because 2 is positive. So this is kind of nice. And e to the power 0, as you know, is equal to 1. So this should give us something like this, right? e to the power c equals 2. Now, what does that tell you, though, right? Well, from here, you can find the value of c. Let's go ahead and do that. Well, if e to the power c equals 2, then you find by ln'ing both sides, right? Kind of like a word ln both sides, you get ln e to the power c, but that is equal to c because you can move the c forward, and this gives you c equals ln 2. Now, I can go ahead and back substitute this into my expression here, and then get the values from there. But we're going to do a little bit more work on that one once we replace the c with what it is. Let's go ahead and rewrite that. The absolute value of y plus 1 equals e to the power x squared over 2. That's unchanged. And then we have times e to the power c. Of course, we've done some work, and then we're going to reverse it. That's not necessary, but it doesn't always work that way. That's why I wanted to show you how to find the c from here. And now the next step is just going to be y plus 1 can be written as now e to the power c. We're going to replace c with ln 2, and this is going to give us e to the power ln 2, which is equal to um, 2, by the way. But we didn't need to do any of this. This is equal to 2 because we already knew that e to the power c is equal to 2 from here. So actually, in this case, you don't really have to solve for c. You can just keep this as is. So from here, we get the following. The absolute value of y plus 1 equals, this is a 2, 2 times e to the power x squared over 2. Now, this means that you can write it as plus minus sign like this. And then if you subtract 1 from both sides, you're going to get an expression for y. So y by itself is going to equal plus minus 2 times e to the power x squared over 2 minus 1. So this basically gives us the solution of uh, this differential equation uh, with the initial condition. And this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.